Under Joe Biden, the world has become vastly more dangerous, and there is no greater danger than the deadly menace of nuclear weapons and hypersonic missiles. Hypersonic missiles move at many times the speed of sound and six times faster than current missiles. Armed with nuclear weapons, they could annihilate entire cities and even countries within minutes. And we cannot let this happen. Pfizer ultimately is thinking about mutating COVID? Well, that is not what we say to the public. No. Don't tell anyone those COVID. You gotta publish on target. You gotta publish on <laughs>
coming very close to the planet lately. And then in Hawaii at the observatory, this weird fucking spiral was spotted in the sky. You know, when you look at kind of like the climate on a global scale and just the weird things like the Tonga Tonga eruption, um, you know, and so much more, the crazy weather that we've had, it's like, you know, what is causing this? Is this all as a result of geoengineering and this mass extermination uh, depopulation plan in the name of sustainable development? Or is this something alien, you know, or, you know, what is this? You know, something external happening. Is it from the result of a, a change in the sun cycle, um, planetary cycles, cosmic cycles? You know, I think right now everybody can feel, though, that whether you look at the astrology or you look at the news or you look at religions and ancient texts and their prophecies uh, that we all know that we're at this season of change you know that things are shifting in a new direction I don't think nobody is completely sure as to what direction that will be you know many people have different schools of thoughts on where the human race is headed right now you know, and looking at, you know, what's being pushed to us, pushed to us and through our collective consciousness, through the mainstream media or, you know, our airwaves, the, the, the Internet, you know, the radio, all of these things are pushing this to us, to the subconscious, you know, and getting us to try to collectively manifest this kind of nightmare, dystopic, um, communist, crazy fucking reality, you know. And it's like almost like the religions want to go with this and play, uh, you know, hero by by being victims of all of this. Like, you know, they want to, you know, be martyrs to, to this kind of world. And then you have, um, you know, politically, everybody wants to be victimized by this world. And it's like this crazy, weird fucking narrative that you see socially engineering all of us to our own destruction. You know, it's um, it's insane. And the totalitarianism of censorship and cancel culture, it's gotten out of fucking control. We have the UK government now admitting that they stalk citizens that were anti-vax and, you know, things like this. Um, government's coming out saying, like, yeah, we're targeting these people. We're going after these people. These are, these are domestic terrorists if they disagree with us. We'll, we'll label their content harmful. Right, and we'll have people like the World Economic Forum come out and call for the, the censorship and the silencing of, of anyone that disagrees, you know. And uh, we'll, we'll virtue signal uh, with one another online to get ex social acceptance and recognition and get an attaboy from, from uh, Big Brother, you know, and um, that, that's, how, that's how we'll all fit in, that's how we'll all make it in this new world. And, you know, it's just craziness. It's um, promoting us to be incredibly distasteful. Um, and it's just inhuman. If you look at the agenda now, it's anti-human. It's like a big death factory. You know, the culling of the masses, the dumbing down of the masses, and then total control, power, and manipulation at the top by very few that have basically all of the resources and all of the money and are making all of the decisions. And these are unelected people, you know, even puppeteering our very own government. So... You know, that's kind of the state of, of things, if you ask me. And um, what's crazy about it is so many so many things I want to show you today that we're going to go through. Uh, I, I want to ask you guys to please read between the lines. Um, use your discernment, your spiritual discernment, and your critical thinking when we're watching this. I'm not a doctor. Uh, I'm not, this isn't legal advice, financial advice, none of that shit. Um, this is for entertainment purposes only. I have to say that. That's a disclaimer. You know, and um, a lot of stuff I won't even be able to show because it's on the public platform. So, uh, thank you, Veritas Legionese. Please find it in your heart to make make a donation. Let's keep this going for fresh meat. Thank you. I uh, appreciate the, the super chat. But it's like this is where we're at now. And I want to show you parts of this video here from the Project Veritas shit. So, I'm going to kind of skip back and forth through it. But... Here we go. We'll start it here. Yesterday, Pfizer's head of research admitted the company was exploring this. They were exploring this. And this wasn't a date. This is like some undercover shit that Veritas did like they always do. And man, this guy shoved his foot in his fucking mouth. Uh, I've never seen nothing like it. It says, well, not. Nah, it seems that they have removed the Project Veritas video on YouTube. And here's the video of the interview on Twitter. You know, and I want you to read this here, you know, and we're going to go to it. 
We're going to show just a little bit of this. Let's see if we can get started here. Here, let me uh, turn on some sound for you guys. There we go. There we go. I, 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 we're exploring like now you know how the virus keeps mutating yeah well one of the things we're exploring is like why don't we just mutate ourselves so we can put uh, we can create undefined developed okay so I'm just going to show you they're talking about taking you know he's trying to ask this guy you know what they're doing um you know with the jab right and they get into this conversation where it takes a weird turn and they don't even talk about what they're poking everyone with but they talk about the virus itself and how they're you know trying to experiment with mutating that so uh looking at something like this you know and how incriminating that that really is from somebody who works directly at pfizer uh i think it says a whole lot about how much is being kept from the masses and kept from the public um you know, all I can say when it comes to these kind of things anymore is that, you know, before you go allow anyone to do anything to your body, make sure you have all of the information. Make sure, you know, you're not just taking anyone's word for it. Like we seen the article the other day that talked about, you know, critical thinking is not good when it comes to science. It's like you shouldn't be thinking when it comes to these topics. You know, let the scientists do the thinking for you. And I would totally disagree with that. I would say it's all of us who have to live with the results of any choices that we make in life. You know, and it's you that's going to live that life. It's you that's going to, you know, have repercussions and consequences for, for your actions and your choices. So I think it's you that needs to do your own research and be thorough about that and make sure that you're making educated choices and decisions and not letting other people pressure you into doing something you don't want to do strictly because what they believe or push to be socially acceptable, right? Like, and we know that that's a lot of it. It's, um... You know, we're, we're virtue signaling and shaming one another into doing things that may not be good for everybody. You know, and it should be a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with you and your, your doctor choice, right? You should be consulting with them before you ever do anything like that to make sure you're even in shape to, to take that kind of risk, you know. Um, and then just look at all of the things that have happened since, you know, and uh, how much of an effort or a concerted effort there is to, to putting this to bed and keeping this quiet overall. You know. Russia warns of nuclear escalation over depleted uranium ammunition for Leopard 2 M1 Abrams and Challenger 2 tanks. After months of requests from Kiev, several Western countries have agreed to supply battle tanks to Ukraine. The Kremlin is now warning that a special type of ammunition could have severe and drastic consequences, a nuclear escalation. Ukraine will receive various modern main battle tanks from various Western countries. And I feel like right now in Ukraine, we know that there's been so much fucking money laundering going on. And you should hear the list um, that the, the president of Ukraine is fucking the, thanking the people. They're like Black Rock and all of these terrible, terrible places um, for their support in Ukraine. We've seen how it was... Uh, kind of trendy and shit online, especially like in the liberal community to support Ukraine, uh, you know, but this has been something, and then, and then look at, you know, Biden, Hunter Biden's laptop and the things that have been connected to that as well, and see what it's really doing. It's this proxy war to, to bring us into conflict with Russia, right, to bring in a nuclear conflict with Russia, and Russia's saying, if you send this crazy fucking artillery over here in our backyard, Right, we're going to escalate. It says during the conflict in Yugoslavia, NATO used such radioactive shells due to the enormous heat that is generated during the impact. Uranium oxides are formed that can contaminate large areas. See, now Konstantin Gavrilov said that the use of this type of projectiles would be treated as a use of a nuclear weapon and they would react accordingly. So they're sending the Leopard 2, Germany which Germany's declaring that they're at war with Russia now, the M1 Abrams, USA, and the Challenger 2 UK tanks, and they can fire depleted uranium munitions. And the US just come out and said that the UK is no longer an elite fighting force, by the way. We warn, and here's Konstantin Gavrilov, quote, we warn the Western sponsors of the Kiev military machine against encouraging nuclear provocations and blackmail. 
We know that Leopard 2 tanks, as well as the Bradley and Martyr armored infantry carriers are armed with armor-piercing projectiles with uranium warheads. Their use leads to the contamination of the area, like it was in former Yugoslavia and Iraq. In case such munitions for NATO-made heavy weapons are supplied to Kiev, we will consider that as the use of dirty nuclear bombs against Russia with all the consequences that come with it. And, you know... This is a, a video on depleted urina, uh, uranium tanks munition called Deadly Darts. Even larger gun would further reduce the ammo capacity to a mere 40 rounds. Pentagon officials, on the other hand, wanted to equip the M1 with the larger German-designed Rheinmetall M256 120mm smoothbore gun. The civilian leadership felt obliged to use the gun in part way to offset German participation in the NATO AWACS program. So you can see there's the tanks there. And the three types of tanks enumerated above can fire uranium depleted munition from their main 120 millimeter caliber guns. The U.S. military uses so-called depleted uranium rounds, or DURs. Um, the depleted uranium is produced as a waste product during the enrichment of uranium. In addition to its significantly low but still significant level of radioactivity, it is characterized by its enormous density of 19.2 grams per cubic centimeter. For comparison, steel has a density of 7.85 grams per cubic centimeter and therefore significantly lighter. And you know what? I just think that this is fucking crazy. Um, the UN Office for Disarmament Affairs writes a report examining the 99 bombing of Yugoslavia when a DUR hit a metal plate. The tremendous kinetic energy is converted into heat, which then produces various forms of uranium oxide. So this thing is essentially like a nuclear weapon, right? The tanks are shooting dirty bombs, um, projectiles. And there's already evidence that, you know, this has got long-term terrible fucking effects on people long after because of the radioactivity from Yugoslavia and Iraq. And you can't blame Russia for seeing that as, you know, a nuclear attack. Um, now, we're going to bring up a video here. This is former President Donald Trump and his 2024 campaign shit on the use of hypersonic missiles and nuclear weapons. You know, he's running on creating this energetic shield. I'll let you see it. Under Joe Biden, the world has become vastly more dangerous, and there is no greater danger than the deadly menace of nuclear weapons and hypersonic missiles. Hypersonic missiles move at many times the speed of sound and six times faster than current missiles. Armed with nuclear weapons, they could annihilate entire cities and even countries within minutes. And we cannot let this happen. If you take a look right now, the nuclear word is being mentioned all the time. This is a word that you're not allowed to use. It was never used during the Trump administration, but now other countries are using that word against us because they have no respect for our leadership. World War III would be a catastrophe unlike any other. This would make World War I and World War II like very small battles. The best way to ensure that such a conflict <laughs> like never very happens small is to be prepared battles. with unmatched technology and unrivaled strength. To this end, when I'm Commander-in-Chief, which we did an awfully good job at rebuilding our military, we rebuilt the entire military, once again, I will work with Congress and our great military leaders, not the ones you see on television. I don't consider them leaders. But we're going to work with them to build a state-of-the-art next-generation missile mm. defense shield. Just as go. Israel is now protected by the Iron Dome. And they're going to do it once thought like Israel. America must have it. Right? And why not, right? We all know that Trump is an Israeli puppet, so... Why wouldn't he have an Iron Dome just like, uh, you know, Daddy Netanyahu? You know what I mean? And no matter what you think, like, um, I think Biden's been the worst president in the history of fucking presidents, just to be honest. And 
single-handedly has destroyed our economy and uh, the inflation and the supply and the whole scorched earth, you know, uh, gambit that's been ran on us through the Biden administration. Like, whew. Um, you know, it's, it's still eerie to see, like, which direction we're going to go if someone like Trump does snatch power back because, um, you know, it seems like they went, they've used this political agenda to really divide us um, internally and, you know, kind of push us to the, the, the brink of civil war with the espionage of our intelligence agencies going against our own government, our own people, um, our own people being targeted, each political party targeting one another. Just dirty, dirty shit, right? Um, so where would we go, you know, if somebody volatile gets in office like that, you know, like, are we going to go? Is that is that what it's going to take for us to go to world wars? Like Biden sets it all the way up, and then Trump comes in and pushes the fucking button, you know, and we actually, you know, go to blows with some of these countries, especially I think China would be, you know, on the horizon. And there's articles right now coming out talking about what would even happen to the United States if China was to take Taiwan. So, I mean, they're gassing you up for conflict with China. They're gassing you up for conflict with Russia, you know, and they have been for a long time. It's like... And they know nobody's going to support Joe Biden if he sends us to war. Nobody, right? So he can come in and run the, the medical uh, agenda that Trump started, right? Run it full go. Um, bring in the, the domestic terrorism and targeting people and fuck up the economy and cr create all this, you know, electrification agenda and all of this shit, right? And then Trump can come in and kind of, uh, you know, go to blows with our enemies and, you know, kind of crash the whole thing as it shifts back to the direction of uh, nationalism and populism. You know, and it's like this whole destabilization act uh, that we've been doing since at least Clinton, Bush, you know, Obama... You know, it's, we've seen this happen time and time again, where they go back and forth, ping pong in the agenda, one side or the other, showing you that at the end of the day, it's all the same people. They're all in bed together. They're all bought and paid for by these corporations, right? Every government in the world is at this point, and it shows you there already is a one world system in place. Um, they're just, you know, this is a controlled demolition of the old world, the old system. That's why it's called the Great Reset. It's going to be, you know, and here, we're going to go here and show you. See, Germany Foreign Minister A. Baerbach confirmed the country is officially at war with Russia. And look, they removed this fucking video too. See what I'm saying? Does she know how dangerous it is to talk like this? She's dragging the entire EU along with Germany. And you know what? This reminds me uh, in the Bible when it talks about Revelation 16, 12 and the dust of the Euphrates preparing the way for the kings of the east. And then we hear things in Revelations that talk about having the head of a leopard, the feet of a bear, right? Germany is the, is the leopard, right? The feet of a bear is Russia, right? The mouth of a lion is the UK, right? You see what I'm saying? It's like, so it's showing you the countries that are involved prophetically in the book of Revelation in this final kind of end time war, right? Bringing in the antichrist system. And we've seen Trump be compared to Cyrus, right? King Cyrus, who was minted on a gold coin. We had the Trump gold coin. The 70 years of Israel took place under Trump. The born on the blood moon. Um, the Middle Eastern peace deal, right? Uh, with the United Arab Emirates and uh, Israel, and that being done through Jared Kushner, who was the owner of the RFID chip building, you know, um, which is like the, the little chips they're putting in everybody that, you know, could be part of the Mark of the Beast system. We know AI is that system, right? That was on 666 Fifth Avenue that he sold before they, you know, he took, he went into office to help. Who was this Israeli puppet? We've seen so many, you know, and Trump being funded by the sixth richest man in the world, you know, before his, it, it's just, it's too, there's too much incriminating evidence for people to buy into it. We watch the same kind of psyops being ran from World War One and Two with Spanish flu, you know, everybody wearing the masks and different pandemics and kind of twist and mix of the Great Depression and shit like that as well uh, that we're seeing now. You know, it's like uh, it, this has happened before, and it, and it was you know it, during the Bolshevik Revolution, it was the, the red wave then, and now it's the red dawn, right, of China that we see kind of happening. And, and instead of the Bolsheviks getting it up the the Russians getting it up the ass like they did back then, as they created Operation Trust, which is just like trust the plan, right? And we know that Trump is the controlled opposition 
set up for character assassination. He's the, the king, um, King Cyrus, right, who was taken down in his fourth year. We had the 30,000 National Guard troops come occupy the capital, send all the federal employees home as the transition took place. Right, we've seen the transition integration project, which showed that the, the, the elections were all set up as a fraud. You know what I mean? They were practicing this just like they do with the crisis acting for every fucking mass shooting, every bombing, every everything that takes place, right? It's all part of these intelligence agencies' agendas to like, you know, push gun control or uh, domestic terrorism or whatever the agenda of the day is, right? You know, and they've even created acts against COVID that way you can't even say or speak things against this either, you know? Here we go. We're going to jump over here. Russian spy ship hanging off the coast of Hawaii to collect intel on the U.S. military's ballistic missile defense system. You see, this is like, it, there ain't bull, I don't think, I don't think it's going to be bullshit much longer. We've seen World War be pushed up our, you know, smoke being blown up our ass for a few years now, a few good years now. Um, but, you know, I, I think we are really getting to that place. We're seeing through the World Economic Forum and shit, like, this great reset, it's COVID, it's economic crash, it's world war, it's probably a fucking alien invasion uh, to, to finish it off. Who knows, right? And maybe the alien invasion is just AI and singularity. It says that within seven years, we'll have reached singularity. Russian spy ship, the Korea, has crossed the Pacific to loiter off the coast of Hawaii. The ship is reportedly off the coast of the Garden Island of Kauai. Kauai is a site of the ballistic missile defense test, and Karelia's presence may indicate an imminent test. The Russian Navy spy ship is thousands of miles from home in America's backyard. The signals collection ship has sailed from its frozen home port in the far Russian east all the way to sunny Hawaii. The ship reportedly sailing off the coast of Kauai may be attempting to gather information from an upcoming U.S. missile defense test. And, uh... That's Mika barking at the mailman. Um, and right here, World Economic Forum announces in a new report that a catastrophic mutating cyber event will strike the world in two years. Do you see, like, they're, they're laying out the plan. These motherfuckers like Klaus Schwab, George Soros, Bill Gates, like, all of these guys, these mega, mega, mega billionaires, right, um... Sir Richard Branson, I could go on and on with all these assets. Elon Musk, right? They're the ones running the globe right now. They're the front men for all of this, you know? And the, the foot soldiers through the military industrial complex, you know, and like consumerism through these corporations and then the government's intelligence agencies working as, you know, this extra column within our own governments to kind of push everything in these agendas and then it's all privatized. Right? Like, this is being pushed. They're laying it out for you piece by piece. COVID-19, The Great Reset, that book by Klaus Schwab told you everything. And the interconnectedness of the system that's been monopolized by these few corporations and broadcast companies. That's why there's only three or four fucking, you know, companies that own all the TV channels. They're showing you, go, uh, COVID-19, Great Reset. Right, and then that agenda would roll out. They even put out handbooks on how they were going to do it. They even put out handbooks on how they were going to attack um, anti-vaccination propaganda. Right, and then uh, that they were going to come out. The next thing would be a cyber event. Right, cyber event, cyber attack, something to possibly take down the grid. Everything's being pushed towards electrification, and then the the most power grid attacks have been happening this whole time as part of this whole scorched earth, right? Um, halting the supply chains, um, fucking with the oil production, that way it'll sink the dollar, the petrodollar, right? Pushing for electrification um, and, you know, removing natural gas from, from the uh, equation, which is all hurting American industry, right? Um, and, and this is setting us up, weakening us, right? We're having shortages, inflation, right? Seven interest rate hikes in 2022, and you haven't even felt the wave of that yet. You know, like this is setting us up, and it's called scorched earth, where you attack a country piece by piece, part by part, every little uh, working mechanism of that society until it collapses. The World Economic Forum report says business leaders believe a, quote, catastrophic cyber event is coming. Cybercrime will grow from a $3 trillion industry in 2015 to $10.5 trillion industry by 2025. The unpredictable nature of cybercrime increases threats. And you can see here, help net security. Business and cyber leaders believe, 
global geopolitical instability is moderately or very likely to lead to a catastrophic cyber event in the next two years. Cyber leaders, 93%. Business leaders, 86%. This is from the 2023 World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. And I'm telling you what, this fucking World Economic Forum, there's never been so much shit come out of one as this year. And all the main characters backed out at the last second. It's like the great revealing happened at this one. You know, it's been fucking insane. I do want to check the comment section. So if you guys are in the chat, I'm going to say big, big ups to you guys. Thanks everybody for joining me in the chat. Make sure to hit the like um, and share this link like on your social medias, your Facebook groups and all that. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribing, uh, click that bell. That way you guys get all the notifications. And if you enjoy the work, donate, support, get a subscription or book a tarot reading. Links are in the description box below. Um, yeah, well, everyone is a part of it. Yeah, that's all there is. I well, I know that. Um, don't hate the elite. Just understand who and what they are. Well, and I, I agree with that, and I think that's why it's important. Uh, for lack of knowledge, surely my people will perish. The Bible tells us to kind of educate ourselves, or we put ourselves in a place for detriment. You know, if you don't understand the dangers around you, then you'll walk face first into all the traps. That's why people give me a hard time for studying the occult and conspiracies and, you know, the doom and gloom shit. But it's like, um, I try to educate myself so I don't walk around in fear of the things I don't understand. I feel like that's what we do. We are afraid of what we don't understand. And once we have understanding and, we, and, and we're able to see clearly and have clarity on something, it removes a doubt, it removes a fear, and it allows us to not only prepare ourselves, um, but to, to, for us to be able to kind of look past it, move to the next thing, and like kind of focus on just living life, man. You know, you don't have to be worried about what's going to happen every day if you're good spiritually. So, the most striking finding that we found, World Economic Forum Manager Director Jimmy Jargon said during a pre presentation highlighting World Economic Forum Global Security Outlook Report 2023, which we have that report as well, is that 93% of cyber leaders and 86% of cyber business leaders believe that the geopolitical instability makes a catastrophic cyber event likely in the next two years. The Outlook. Uh, report 20 here we we're go. here today to share the findings of the world economic forums uh, global security outlook uh, report 2023 this is a result of uh, research in collaboration with the forums communities and our partner accenture which we've uh, interviewed and sought input from over 300 executives globally the most striking finding that we found is that 93 percent of cyber leaders and 86 percent of cyber business leaders believe that the geopolitical instability makes a catastrophic cyber event likely in the next two years. There you go. Right out the horse's mouth, you know. So this is a global threat. Um, it calls for a global response and enhanced and coordinated action. He said the increased profits that the multiple bad actors reap from cybercrime should encourage world leaders to work together to make it a priority as they face new sophisticated tools. One country that recently saw a massive cyber attack, Albania, is now working with larger allies and warding off the criminals, serving as laboratory of sorts for folks to realize what is coming. And this is Davos 2023 event, why we must invest in cybersecurity. We're in conversation with Akshay Joshi, who leads everything cybersecurity for the World Economic Forum. Thank you very much for talking to Money Control. Akshay, I want to start by asking you, what is the single most biggest threat that nations face today when it comes to cyber attacks? Look, we're in a period of unprecedented uh, geopolitical instability. We recently came out with a report where 93% of cyber executives and uh, that's clearly a talking point, by the way, said that they expect a catastrophic cyber event over the next two years. Now that's pretty significant. What's even more significant is that 43% of those surveyed actually believe that uh, they could materially be affected by an incident. Right. So these things are pretty big. 
And uh, critical infrastructure protection, especially in light of the geopolitical instability, becomes one of the key focus areas. Uh, if we look at uh, our global risk perception survey that we published very recently, uh, cr security of critical infrastructure is top of mind. It's a top five risk. Right. And, uh, you know, the... the yeah, and, you know, we have that uh, survey as well. We looked at it. It says, let's imagine an exponential multitude of viruses that mutate every day exponentially while not only threatening our body, but the bodies we live in, our organizations, our countries, our system. Then, you know, it could just be just apocalypse. It's about viruses that can not only block our way of living, but control it and deviate it. Wow. It's a fucking spooky, spooky ass, um, you know, quote right there. And you can see it's in popular mechanics. A catastrophic mutating event will strike the world in two years, a report said. And this is, you know, the same thing that, you know, this unpredictable nature of cybercrime increasing threats. We also see the global cybersecurity outlook of 2023. This is from the World Economic Forum. I did pull this up and just wanted to show you the, the emerging threats. It says, emerging threats, more resources are being thrown at cybercrime campaigns by criminal groups. And there's a sense that cybercrime is converging with nation state actors. That this is leading to a higher number of new campaigns being launched as well as attacks that are more clearly tailored to the target organization. The greater the volatility in the threat, the more time is being spent on tactical defense by CSOs and their teams. It is important to create the space for strategic development and effective risk management. And that's the global threat intelligence at Fortinet. Cyber attackers come in many forms with different motivations in cybersecurity terminology. These disparate groups are often bundled together using the term threat actors. In 2022, malicious threat actors adapted quickly to exploit changes in the political, technical, and regulatory landscapes. And I just want you to show that threat actors can come in a, a multitude of ways. You can be online posting what they consider to be harmful content or hate content, right? Hateful content, and you become a, a threat actor and a domestic um, threat uh, within your nation as well, right? And that, that could be something as simple as being anti-jab, right? That simple, dude. That's how, how quickly it can happen. And I want to show you, this is what they're calling for, and this is how they're pushing for this shit. Experts at Davos 2023 call for a global response to the gathering cyberstorm. Right? Check this out. Deprived platforms that spread disinformation of oxygen. This is a fucking creepy one. One of the sadnesses of the last five years is the deterioration of trust in NGOs. And my hypothesis on this is that... Um, Right-wing um, groups have done a really good job of disenfranchising NGOs. They've challenged the funding sources. They've associated you with Bill Gates and George Soros. They've said that you're big world people as opposed to actually what you are, which is local. Um, I mean, I just wrote down pandemic, climate crisis, racial equity. My God, the sweet spot of the civil society should be right now. But what's happened is splintering of groups, disappearance of the leaders, and also, frankly, um, advocacy towards the extremes. And that enables you to be pinned by the right. I just think civil society has to establish specific goals that it has to meet. Okay, reading levels or whatever. So if companies are being held to net zero by 2040 or whatever it is, well, why doesn't civil society do same? I think the first thing that, because um, I mostly work Watch with it. business, that business go. needs to do is deprive um, platforms that spread disinformation of oxygen. Stop advertising. Pull your promotion money. Make sure that they understand that they have a consequential impact on society. Make them understand they have a consequential impact on society. He's saying make them understand that there's a consequence to going against these corporations. All right? If we're trying to create net neutrality by 2024, net zero, right? We're trying to GMOs, CRISPR technology, AI. We're going to push socialism. We're going to push universal basic income. We're going to push all these different agendas down your throat, electrification, all of this, right? Um, 
if you go against that, let them know there will be consequences. Deprive the platforms that spread disinformation of oxygen. You see how fucking nefarious this shit is, honestly. It's just, it's downright evil. It's downright evil. And you see, this is censorship in action. You know, how many different, you know, articles have I pulled up that, um, you know, the videos are just, they're gone, right? They're gone. Now, I want to show you this. This is some crazy shit, too. Uh, especially kind of looking at some of the things that have been taking place here. We're going to take a look at that towards the end, the um, Pfizer um, interview. But Bill Gates says, China's rise is a huge win for the world, right? And it's like, here we go. Uh, Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates said that China's rise is a huge win for the world during an interview in Australia on Monday. Gates made the comment during an interview with the Lowy Institute, a think tank based in Sydney, Australia. Quote, I tend to see China's rise as a huge win for the world, Gates said. I mean, that's 20% of humanity. They today match their portion of the global economy and their portion of the global population match exactly. You know, countries like Australia, US, we have per capita GDPs five times what the Chinese have, so we have a disproportionate share of the world's economy. His comments about the communist country came in response to a question asking how Gates, how how bullish Gates was on China. What the fuck? You know, I do think the current mentality of the U.S. to China in which is reciprocated is kind of a lose-lose mentality. That is, if you ask U.S. politicians, hey, would you like the Chinese economy to shrink by 20% or grow by 20%? I'm afraid they would vote that, yeah, let's immiserate those people, not understanding that the global economy, the invention of cancer drugs, the solution of climate change, you know, we're all in this together. And, you know, this is that loving fucking philanthropist, right, Bill Gates. We know just uh, how magical of the world he's made us, you know, like um, a real good guy there, you know. Um, real good guy there. And he hasn't been involved in none of this crazy shit the whole time, and... You know, I'm sure we'd all benefit from social credit scoring and total censorship and all of that and complete spying on the people, which we already have here, but it's just more out in the open. And it's like, that's more of the way they, you know, the model for the, the one world system that they want to shift to. And I hate to say it, but the United States economy is based, we, we, we get everything from China. So if China goes down, you know, that's why our supplies have been so heavily affected the last year or so is because our relations with China and, you know, a lot of the attack on the China, China's economy and shit from during the Trump era and, and Joe Biden's just been a pussy and basically, you know, allowed things that, you know, to, to really even get way far out of control since he's been there. The WHO updates critical medicines list for radiological and nuclear emergencies. Interesting, right? We have all this shit going on with Russia and China and, you know, all this talk about nuclear weapons, including uh, the new Oppenheimer movie, right? Um, now they're updating the critical medicines list for the radiological and nuclear emergencies. The World Health Organization today updated its list of medicines that should be stockpiled for radiological and nuclear emergencies, along with policy advice for their appropriate management. These stockpiles include medicines that either prevent or reduce exposure to radiation or treat injuries once exposure has occurred. Quote, in radiation emergencies, people may be exposed to radiation at doses ranging from negligible to life-threatening. Governments need to make treatments available for those in need and fast, said Dr. Maria Nira, the WHO Assistant Director General at Healthier Populations Division. It is essential that governments are prepared to protect the health of populations and respond immediately to emergencies. This includes having steady supplies of life-saving medicines that will reduce risk and treat injuries from radiation. And the publication supersedes the 2007 WHO report on the development of national stockpiles for radiation emergencies and includes updated information on the stockpile formulary based on the developments in radiation emergency medicine in the last decade. It provides policy advice for acquisition of drugs which can prevent and reduce 
radionuclides uptake or increase elimination of radionuclides from the human body. It looks at the main elements required for developing, maintaining, and managing the national stockpiles of specific medical supplies which will be required for radiological and nuclear emergencies. And the report looks at the role of national health authorities in the stockpile development as well as the role of the WHO as the leading international organization in public health and both the authority and responsibility to assist in health emergencies. The WHO provides advice and guidance to countries on public health preparedness and response to radiation emergencies, including stockpile development. Health emergencies may assist in procuring, sharing medical supplies among countries. And, you know, it's just... Basically, they've updated, you know, how each country should handle it in case of nuclear war, right? And radiation exposure to the population. I feel like it's kind of uh, really interesting that, you know, that's coming out this time, you know. That's coming out this time with all the shit that we have, you know, going on. I think um, very interesting. Is the Ukraine war about to get more serious? Who updates critical medicines list for the radiological and nuclear emergencies? And this is just showing you, you know, the same thing that we just shown, right? The components of the pharmaceutical stockpile. I'm actually going to drop this link here into the chat for people who want to check this out. You want to look at this yourself. Um, kind of just refresh yourself on nuclear. I mean, I can tell you this. I think everybody in the world should have some potassium iodide in their house or something like that. Or have some type of bug out bag or, you know, at least understand how to protect yourself. And I can tell you if you soak a, a comforter or a heavy blanket in water, um, uh, water can protect you from like 98% of radioisotopes if, if you ever was to be in the immediate blast area of a nuclear bomb or uh, radioactive fallout. So, you know, you can look that stuff up for yourself. You can see also um, there are uh, sites that have the primary, secondary, and tertiary nuclear targets for all the major cities within the United States and the state, 50 states of the United States. So you can kind of see... Um, you know, like where you're located and what would be the most likely place to be targeted. Just little things like that. Um, TikTok is about to be banned in the U.S. Many are applauding the initiative, citing security concerns over the app, which appears to be mining data on American citizens and making them available to the CCP. Others, however, believe that this is a government overreach and claim that companies like Facebook, Google, Twitter, etc. are guilty of the same offense. Hmm. The nationwide uh, ban on TikTok about to come a reality. You can see here. Inches closer to reality. New legislation filed by Missouri Senator Josh Howley proposes a nationwide ban on the widely popular Chinese-owned app. The White House facing mounting pressure from Congress to ban the widely popular TikTok app nationwide after Senator Josh Howley and Congressman Ken Buck introduced a piece of legislation on Wednesday to curb its use. A similar bill to ban TikTok in the U.S. was filed during the last congressional session, but it was not considered in either chamber. The No TikTok on the United States Devices Act would ban access to the app on all devices but it may face pushback from a divided Congress in the coming weeks. I would love to know what you guys think about this. Um, TikTok is known to be extremely fucking invasive, right, with uh, the way that they backdoor the technology uh, and are able to spy on you and data mine you by use of the app. Um, and, and, you know, it's an extremely popular app as well, so everybody's on it, so they're getting all types of information. Uh, but... Yeah, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, any app that you use um, is just the same. I mean, they backdoor the fuck out of you and they use your information and data mine your information just the same, track you, spy on you just the same, you know. Uh, but I guess the fact that it's China, this is more like of an attack on, on China, you know, to kind of push things, um, you know, to create worse relations with China. It's just, it's like we're trying to out-petty them, it almost seems, you know. And it's like, I feel like we're doing a good fucking job, you know, honestly. Um, it seems like Zelensky ordered the destruction of all state docks associated with Metabiota on February 24th, 2022nd. Zelensky was probably trying to cover up the connection to Biden and the biolabs. 
the Ministry of Defense with the participation of specialists of the Security Service of Ukraine in connection with the conduct of martial law in Ukraine from February 24, 2022, in accordance with the decree of the President of Ukraine, organized the devastating destruction of personal files of servicemen, employees, and staff of the State Institution Center for Public Health of the Ministry of Health of Ukraine. Ukrainian Research Anti-Plague Institute Mechnikov of the Ministry of Health of Ukraine and Laboratory Centers of the Ministry of Health of Ukraine, which worked together with scientist Metabiot Inc. Battelle. Wow. So you can see right there. That's pretty interesting, um, to say the least, that they had, you know, that destroyed. I think that's, uh, a lot of people believe that there's a lot more to uh, Biden and uh, those documents and the, and the laptop and all that than what anybody knows. Matter of fact, there's a lot of crazy shit that's come out recently saying that, um, you know, there's a lot more incriminating things there than, than what we'll probably ever know. Um, Army spied on lockdown critics, skeptics, including our own Peter Hitchens, long suspected they were under surveillance. Whoops. Sorry, guys. They were under surveillance. Let me move my app here. Sorry about that. They were under surveillance. Now we've obtained official records that prove they were right all along. Shadowy, shadowy army units secretly spied on British citizens who criticized the government's COVID lockdown policies the mail on Sunday can reveal. Military operatives in the UK's Information Warfare Brigade were part of a sinister operation that targeted politicians and high-profile journalists who raised doubts about the official pandemic response. They compiled dossiers on public figures such as ex-minister David Davis, who questioned the modeling behind alarming death toll predictions, as well as journalists such as Peter Hitchens and Toby Young. Their dissenting views were then reported back to number 10. Wow, that's so fucking crazy. You know, it's like they're, they're, they're actually admitting this now, you know, that, um, you know, they, they've been spying on people that had dissenting voices and that people that were not going along with this agenda uh, were essentially, you know, having their own governments turn on them. And it's like, it's pretty interesting to see this coming out in so many different places, um, especially in the UK, right? Which acts like, you know, I think their citizens have been done in by their government so badly over the last few years. It's not funny since Brexit and all that. Pfizer drug breaches ends in biggest US crime fine. Pfizer, the world's largest drug co company, has been hit with the biggest criminal fine in U.S. history, part of a $2.3 billion settlement with federal prosecutors for mispromoting medicines and for paying kickbacks to compliant doctors. Hmm. It blows its to its reputation in the eyes of doctors and patients. Pfizer pleaded guilty to misbranding the painkiller Bextra, withdrawn from the market in 2004 by promoting the drug for uses that were not approved by regulators. Hmm, how about that? I feel like, you know, that's pretty... Are people surprised, you know, that to be coming from, from Pfizer? No? You know, I, don't, I didn't think so. I don't think that's surprising at all. We're going to take a look here at Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. This is an interesting document, an introductory programming manual. This is the Operations Resource Technical Manual. Uh, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars was top secret. Let me see if I can. Sorry, guys. My plug keeps coming on loose. All right. Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. The astonishing document is discovered in a surplus copier purchased from Boeing Aircraft in 1986. It reveals details of a plan hatched in the embryonic days of the Cold War, which called for control of the masses through manipulation of industry, uh, people's pastimes, education, and the political leanings. It called for a quiet revolution, pitting brother against brother and diverting the public's attention from what is really going on. For all intents and purposes, this document has come to pass, reprinted in its original form. Let's take a look at this. I feel like this is uh, very interesting. Okay, 
It is patently impossible to discuss social engineering or the automation of a society, the engineering of social automation systems, silent weapons, on a national or worldwide scale without implying extensive objectives of social control and destruction of human life, i.e. slavery and genocide. This manual is in itself an analog declaration of intent. Such a writing must be secured from public scrutiny, otherwise it might be recognized as a technically formal declaration of domestic war. Furthermore, whenever any person or group of persons in a position of great power and without the full knowledge and consent of the public uses such knowledge and methodology for economic conquest, it must be understood that a state of domestic warfare exists between said person or group of persons and the public. The solution of today's problems requires an approach which is ruthlessly candid, with no agonizing over religious, moral, or cultural values. You have qualified for this project because of your ability to look at human society with cold objectivity and yet analyze and discuss your observations and conclusions with others of similar intellectual ca capacity without a loss of discretion or humility. Such virtues are exercised in your own best interest. Do not deviate from them. Welcome aboard. This publication makes the 25th anniversary of the Third World War called The Quiet War being conducted using subjective biological warfare fought with silent weapons. This book contains an introductory description of this war, its strategies, and its weaponry. May 1979. Silent weapon technology has evolved from operations research, a strategic and tactical methodology developed under the military management in England during World War II, the original purpose of operations research was to study the strategic and tactical problems of air and land defense with the objective and effective use of limited military resources against foreign enemies, i.e. logistics. It was soon recognized by those in positions of power that the same methods might be useful for total controlling, totally controlling a society, but better tools were necessary. Social engineering. The analysis and automation of a society requires a correlation of great amounts of constantly changing economic information or data. So a high-speed computerized data processing system was necessary which could race ahead of the society and predict when society would arrive for capitulation. Relay computers were too slow. But the electronic computer, invented in 1946 by J. Presper Ecker and John W. Mouchley, filled the bill. The next breakthrough was the development of the simplex method of linear programming in 1947 by the mathematician George B. Danzig. Then in 1948, the transistor, invented by J. Barden, W. H. Breton, and W. Shockley, produced great expansion of the computer field by reducing space and power requirements. With those three, three inventions under their direction, those in positions of power strongly suspected that it was possible for them to control the whole world with the push of a button. Immediately, the Rockefeller Foundation got in on the ground floor by making a four-year grant to Harvard College, funding the Harvard Economic Research Project for the study of the structure of the American economy. One year later, in 1949, the United States Air Force joined in. In 1952, the original grant period terminated and a high-level meeting of the elite was held to determine the next phase of the social operations research. The Harvard project had been very fruitful as is borne out by the publication of some of its results in 1953 suggesting the feasibility of economic and social engineering. Studies in the Structure of the American Economy, copyright 1953, International Sciences, White Plains, New York. Engineered in the last half of the decade in the 40s, the now quiet war machine stood, so to speak, in sparkling gold-plated hardware on the showroom floor by 1954. With the creation of the Mincer in 54, the promise of unlocking unlimited sources of fusion, atomic energy from the heavy hydrogen in seawater, and the consequent availability of unlimited social power became a possibility only decades away. 
The combination was irresistible. The quiet war was quietly declared by the International League at a meeting held in 1954. Although the silent weapon system was nearly exposed 13 years later, the evolution of the new weapon system has never suffered any major setbacks. This volume marks the 25th anniversary of the beginning of the Quiet War. Already, this domestic war has had many victories on many fronts throughout the world. In 54, it was well recognized by those in positions of authority that it was only a matter of time, only a few decades before the general public would be able to grasp and upset the cradle of power for the very elements of the new silent weapon technology were as accessible for public utopia as they were for providing a private utopia. The issue of primary concern, that of dominance, revolved around the subject of energy sciences. In conclusion, the objective of economic research and conducted by the magnets of capital banking and the industry of commodities and goods and services is the establishment of an economy which is totally predictable and manipulatable. In order to achieve a totally predictable economy, the low class elements of society must be brought under total control, i.e. must be housebroken, trained, and assigned a yoke and long-term social duties from a very early age before they have an opportunity to question the propriety of the matter. In order to achieve such conformity, the lower class family union must be dis disintegrated by a process of increasing preoccupation of the parents and the establishment of government-operated daycare centers for the occupationally orphaned children. The quality of education given to the lower class must be of the poorest sort, so that the so that the blank of ignorance isolating the inferior class from the superior class is and remains incomprehensible to the inferior class. Mm, wow. <sighs> let's, let's take a look at some. We'll take a look at some of the highlight ones here. This form of slavery is essential for maintaining some measure of social order, peace, and tranquility for the ruling upper class. Everything that is expected from an ordinary weapon is expected from a silent weapon by its creators, but only in its own manner of functioning. It shoots situations instead of bullets, propelled by data processing instead of chemical reactions or explosions, originating from bits of data instead of grains of gunpowder, from a computer instead of a gun, operated by a computer programmer instead of a marksman, under the orders of a banking magnet instead of a military general. Wow. Give me control over a nation's currency and I care not who makes its laws. Today's silence weapons technology is an outgrowth of a simple idea discovered, succinctly expressed and effectively applied by the quoted. In the science of physical mechanics, the phenomenon of energy dissipation is associated with a physical property called friction or resistance and can be represented by dash pot or by devices which convert system energy into heat. In economics, these energy concepts are associated with economic capacitance or capital, money, stocks, inventory, investments in buildings and durables, etc. Two, economic conductance, goods, production, flow coefficients. And three, economic inductance, service, the influence of the population or industry of output. All the mathematical theory developed in the study of one energy system, mechanics, electronics, etc., can be immediately applied in the study of any other energy system. Example given, economics. Wow, dude. This is fucking crazy. And they go through this entire thing <laughs> and talk about dominating the society on every fucking front. Economically, through the money, by socially engineering us, manipulating us. Uh, Mr. Rothschild had discovered that currency or deposit loan accounts had required the appearance of power that could be used to induce people, their inductance, with people corresponding to a magnetic field into surrendering their real wealth in exchange for a promise of greater wealth uh, intended of real instead of real compensation. What the fuck? And if you think about that, 
I hate to say it, guys. This just proves how occultic this really is, right? Um, he's using energy flow systems. So this is the manipulation of energy, which in essence is witchcraft. Yes, it's broken down in a real scientific sounding explanation. Um, and it's technologically, you know, uh, you know, des described technologically, right? Through the use of computers and data and, you know, the manipulation of, of, of information and data like that. But uh, this is metaphysics being broken down right here too. They're understanding it at a metaphysical, spiritual level, right? Breaking off the, talking about inducing people who are corresponding to a magnetic field into surrendering their real wealth in exchange for a promise of greater wealth. So they're magnetically attracting people to this, you know, illusion of wealth. War is therefore the balance of the system by killing the true creditors, the public which we have taught to exchange true value for inflated currency, and falling back on whatever is left of the resources of nature and the regeneration of those resources. This is some crazy shit, man. This is some crazy shit. It talks about the profit derived from the economic methodology made Mr. Rothschild all the more, more wealthy and all the more able to extend his wealth. He found that the public greed would allow currency to be printed by government orders beyond the limit or inflation of backing in precious metal or the production of goods and services, gross national product. Um, apparent capital as paper and doctor. Oh my gosh, just talking about the fiat system. Since energy is the key to all activity on the face of the earth, it follows that in order to obtain a monopoly of energy, raw materials, goods, and services to establish a world system of slave labor, it's necessary to have a first strike capability in the field of economics. In order to maintain our position, it is necessary that we have absolute first knowledge of the sci science of control over all economic factors and the first experience at engineering the world economy. And you know what? It just goes to show you that these people understood something um, at a deep fucking level beyond, I think, what any of us can even really truly comprehend even now. Most people have no clue what they're talking about, right? Like most, your average person has no clue about this, right? They have no clue about this. And this is an in-detailed, outlined um, plan and process on how to intricately manipulate the masses, right? And do it... Um, do it through energetics, right? Manipulating energy in this kind of like bait and hook system to to get everybody to use their energy to work for them so they can exploit the public you know kill the people who have real value continue to inflate um the, the monetary system that's out there and take all value out of the system like vampires i mean it's fucking crazy and leave a system that's just a shell of itself that can be imploded and collapsed just by you know the push of a button and that's what's left something so interconnected um, and monopolized that they control the whole thing, you know. They can manipulate the whole shit and that's how they have control and slave labor, right? This is establish a world system of slave labor. It's only a matter of time before the now a uh, breed of private programmer economists will catch on to the far-reaching implications of the work begun at Harvard in 48. The speed with which they can communicate their warning to the public will largely depend on how effective we have been at controlling the media, subverting education, and keeping the public distracted with matters of no real importance. Economics is not only a social extension of natural energy system. And here we go. This was an extension of World War II operations research. Its purpose was to discover the science of controlling an economy, at first the American economy, then the world. Um, the behavior of the structure can be predicted and how it can be manipulated. It was discovered that an economy obeyed all the same laws as electricity and that all of the mathematical theory and practical and computer know-how developed for this electro electric field could be directly applied in the study of economics. Jesus, man. Now think about the AI systems in place. Think about um, 
the FBI and the CIA and their involvement in Twitter and fucking F and, and on Facebook and all and Google and the analytics and the data mining that's happened. Then think about um, you know the, the the pushing of fake news to get you know these graded news social credit scored news now that pushes you know different storylines and agendas, which is part of the mockingbird media designed to get you to think in a certain way. Right, designed in, in tailored algorithms, right, for individual ads and consumerism. Right, and now trying to shut down and silence and censor anything that dissents from this. You know, and they're laying out the agenda in front of you. They're calling it a great reset. They're calling it this. They're calling it that. And they're letting you know, right, one by one, piece by piece, this is how it will play out. This is where we will take you. This is how we will thin you out enslave you and accomplish our agenda one way shape form facet or another like you know and we'll do it in the name of climate change we'll do it in the name of, of uh, pandemics and health and safety and security and anti-terrorism and the war on drugs and you know we'll do it in the name of whatever we have to protecting America and you know, making America great, and it doesn't matter. Whatever angle they choose to go from, it's all the same thing. And they're going to do it in every country across the world, right? And the, the puppet politicians are going to go along with it because they know who pays their salary and they know who will kill their ass if they don't do it. You know? And it's like uh, the few corporations that own all the media and the news networks are going to continue to, to sing the same tune until everybody sings it. You know, and it's up to you at the end of the day which song you choose to sing, right? Like, all of us have the ability to think for ourselves, to use our own critical thinking, our own spiritual discernment when it comes to, you know, what we choose to believe. And I'm not telling you have to even be vocal about what you believe, right? But believe in something, you know, and don't allow yourself to be steered and engineered like a, like a rat or, you know, in a, in a maze, pushing you to, to be something you're not or, you know, living with these expectations of what you're supposed to be based on a, a fake-ass society and a fake-ass internet, you know, that everybody's buying into, that everybody's the same in and nobody's, nobody lives out that special spark, right? Because they say in this new system, there, there is no spark. They can predict it all. They can control it all. They have become God. Right, the machine has become God. It's no longer an internet of things, it's an internet of bodies. You know. Down to the quantum. They've you know, they've broken the code. And it's like they're just trapping us all in our own echo chamber of of fucking craziness. You know, and nobody's willing to break free, nobody's willing to break out, nobody's even willing to stand up for themselves, let alone other people, or, you know, like push or support something that, that is positive, that is good, that does push back. You know, it's like I hope we naturally evolve out of this somehow. I hope that we naturally, you know, get an in, in, in immense awareness in the whole uh, species. And it's like we can, we're conscious on a whole new level and all of this stuff is left behind and we outgrow all of this. You know, we mature past all of this. We do something bigger, better, you know. That, that we're all capable of. I believe like humanity has risen and fallen many, many times. Many times. Right? Many times. And it's been because of these events. Right? But each time one of these events, maybe these natural events that take place that wipes us off the face of the earth and ends these great civilizations have happened for a fucking reason. You know? And you can say it's God or it's angels or aliens or whatever, right? It doesn't even really truly matter what's doing it. The fact is something keeps resetting us back, right? Because every time we get to the precipice of, of, of where, we, where we could be, it seems like we're on, we destroy ourselves, you know? We don't seem to survive the, the big test on whether or not we're, we're ready to evolve to something more or take it to the next level. You know, I think we were more advanced in the past than we are now. And you look at uh, the geological data and astrological records and just, you know, uh, historical text, ancient text, it talks about many destructions all around the world happening time and time again, comets, floods, 
ice ages, you name it, right? And the proof is there. And it's like, you can even see great pyramids and these crazy structures all over the world. We, we've had high points of civilization before, you know? And it's like, I feel like we only descend down as time goes on. What happened to all these older cultures? Why did they disappear? You know, there's even evidence of some place, and maybe it's asteroid impacts, maybe it's nuclear weapons. But there's these ancient wars between the gods too, this advanced technology. And it's like, who's to say that it just wasn't us in another epoch, another era, doing the same fucked up shit that we're doing now? You know? Hopefully we will eventually evolve past all of this, you know. But I digress. Um, this week, your last chance to see the rare green comet. Comet 2022 E3 ZTF. This is, you know, uh, going to be your last chance to see this comet since it's past the Earth. This is the first time it's passed in 50,000 years. This is right off of the heels of a near miss asteroid passing just a couple days ago. Um, you know, I, this thing you can be seen with the naked eye. There's been lots of images taken of it. You know, I, I find it always interesting that when we look at our the, our stories of of these cycles ending of change taking place, it always coincides with the celestial event, the passing of some star or some comet. You know, so I find that to be incredibly interesting and something that's at least worth taking a look at. And then finally, the mysterious whirlpool appeared over Mauna Kea, Hawaii. Take a look at this fucking weird shit. Let me make sure you have sound. Um, yeah. Look at that. This weird fucking spiral. Weird ass spiral in the sky. Captured by Skylive camera, Subaru telescope. It's in Hawaii. I mean, they're, they're trying to say that this thing was SpaceX or some shit like that, but, you know, is this like weapons being tested? Is this something coming in from fucking outside of the universe? Is this ETs? Is this, what is this, man? You know, this is very strange to see. Just keeping it all the way real. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on everything that's taking place anyways. Honestly. You know? It's like, uh... It's a simulation. It could be a simulation. Sim sim uh, Seeking Truth says simulchrome or simulation. Yeah, well, it could be. I mean, we don't really know. 25 in ice in northwest Texas. Well, I just feel like, you know, whatever is happening, um, whatever is happening, we're, we're, we're watching it. We got front row seats to the greatest show on earth. It is a beautiful time to be alive. I do, I do know that there is a lot of positive too. You know, people are... They are stepping into new awareness. You know, there really is some of that going on. And people are finding themselves and their spiritual gifts and, you know, finding compassion and love for one another. And people are breaking out of the system and, and learning how to tap in, you know. And I think that's all we can truly hope for is that, you know, we, we evolve and we create something greater for the future. Um, I am going to wrap up this video uh, I want to thank all of you guys for joining me. Uh, please, please, please hit the like, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and share this. Get it out there, that way new people can find us. Make sure to subscribe, click all on the notifications bell, and remember, we're completely viewer powered, so if you enjoy the content, you enjoy the work, please donate, support, uh, Facebook, um, PayPal, Venmo, Patreon, Cash App, YouTube or Facebook subscriptions, uh, merch, or you can book your own personal tarot reading, the real best damn podcast at gmail.com. I have uploaded uh, content to the Dropbox. I posted it in the YouTube subscription and on Patreon for all of you guys. Um, if you want to look at some of our classic videos, check out BitChute. If you want to look at that Pfizer Project Veritas video, go subscribe on BitChute and um, Rumble. I'll post it there for you guys. I just couldn't show it. You know, here on YouTube, I didn't want to get in trouble. They've been hitting me with strikes left and right. 
Make sure to sub the backup channel. Follow me, Twitter, The Real Best Damn, and Instagram and Facebook, Best Damn Podcast. And check out all the other platforms. All the links are in the description. I'll be doing a private show probably uh, this weekend coming up over on Discord. So join us there. Join the Best Damn Fam, and you can get access to that and you know all our uncensored videos. Um, I do appreciate all of you guys for joining me. Higher Mind 1111, James Dunn, uh, Kimberly F., Truth Behind the Lie, School Purger, Seeking Truth. Thank you guys. You guys are the shit, man. Chris Nicola. Yeah, man, I love all you guys so much. And like I said, I, I can't thank you enough. I hope you guys hit the like. And um, yeah, I, I just want to say thank you guys for all that you do. And thank you for everybody that supported and uh, donated and super chats and all that too. All right, guys, remember Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. God bless you all. I love you, and I will see you next time. Peace.